Hi everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Casca and in today's video I'll be making a late Victorian petticoat. This is the second video in my series on making a Giga's Alien inspired 1890s walking suit. In my last video I made the combinations and now it's time for the petticoat. I may make the bum pad in this video, it'll just depend on if I've got time or not. I'll be using a skirt pattern from the book Authentic Victorian Fashion Patterns as a base and I'll be adding pin tucks, which I learned how to do in my last video, lace and a big ruffle for the bottom. Anyone who has made a petticoat before will know that it takes a lot of fabric. So as a skinned person, I'll be using some muslin I got from Pound Fabrics. Not sponsored, but they are legit good if you need fabric on a budget. It's actually really like quite soft and lightweight, so fingers crossed it's going to work out okay. <laughs> right, let's crack on. Okay, this is the pattern I'm going to be using. As you can see, it looks like it's quite slim at the front and there's a lot of room at the back, so that should give me the kind of shape I want. I like using wrapping paper for doing patterns because it's readily available, it's cheap and generally you'll have a grid on it. The only really annoying thing about this particular wrapping paper though is you'd think the grid will be in like a centimetre or an inch, but no, this is in eight millimetre. So it's great for getting my straight lines, but it's not actually usable in any way to measure anything. Okay, so we have pattern pieces. Ended up having to do some wrapping paper piecing because these pattern pieces are massive. I wasn't able to get any footage of the back panel because it was literally so big that there wasn't enough room for the pattern piece and my tripod. Okay, so my next plan is I wanna use this whole pattern because I really like it and I'm going to use it for the main skirt. So in order to use it for the petticoat, what I need to do is measure down to, I think it was 18 inches, uh, which is where I want the ruffles to start. So that I can just fold the excess over and then I've got my pattern ready and cut out for when I do my main skirt. Okay, so I've made a little mistake. Luckily, it's a mistake that is really, really easily sorted. When I was measuring this out, I measured it to where I thought I wanted the first ruffle to start. When looking at extant garments though, they actually start a bit lower. It's more like below the knee rather than above the knee. So there's that. And I also completely forgot about the pin tucks, which I'm gonna have to add some extra material in there to account for the pin tucks. Luckily, I just folded this. I didn't actually cut it. So I can just add on some extra length. So we should still be okay. Doing all this cutting on the floor is really making me realize that I need to get a cutting mat because it is incredibly hard to actually cut straight lines when your scissors keep snagging on either the fabric or the carpet. I'm now just pressing everything ready to be sewn together later. I'm just measuring out my pin tucks now. Last time I didn't give myself enough space between each one so I ended up with one fat one and a bunch of little ones. So this time I'll be able to actually get them even. I 
I pinned my guidelines for the pin tucks before sewing them with my machine. I then stitched the sides of the skirt together leaving one side open. This was to make it easier to attach the ruffle. I decided I wanted my ruffle to be about 5 metres long. Because of this I used the salvage edge of the fabric because there's no way I'm going to hem 5 metres worth of fabric. Especially since I had to do the gathering stitches as well. I did my gathering stitches in 4 quadrants. This was so it would be easier for me to actually gather it up. I used large basting stitches to temporarily attach the ruffle. Next I cut my net to length. Right, I've been fiddling with this and I'm not 100% sure on if I want to have it like this with just a bit peeking out or scrap it all together or do it like half so it's like that and then with the ruffle sticking out I'm gonna have to have a bit of a play and mess about and ask for some advice on Facebook I do legit like that I used to get some advice off people before going ahead with it though because oh, these need to be ironed this is everything's still kind of tacked down at the moment <laughs> so that's my excuse for not ironing these yet but yeah i do like this with it like with a half but if i cut this in half then there's no going back so i have to be 100 percent certain that that's what i want to do I'm also thinking I might actually get some use out of this lace that is a, bit, a little bit kind of scratchy because this isn't going straight against my skin so it doesn't matter as much and I think this could potentially look quite nice if I do a layer of insertion lace like here I think that would be it, it'd also kind of tie these in nicely as well I think so yes, <laughs> not to think about I decided to finish my seams by hand felling. It was getting on a bit and my sewing machine is quite loud, so some hand sewing made for a relaxing evening. I finally got round to pressing those pin tucks. For the waistband, I wanted the front to be quite flat and the back to be gathered. I attached the shorter band to the front with a couple of pleats to make it fit, and then the back band was the full width. The bands were then folded over the raw edges and top stitched making sure I caught the back of the waistband. A drawstring was then inserted into each band. To finish off the petticoat I attached some lace above the pin tucks. Okay so I've drafted a pattern for the bum pad because it turns out I do have enough time to do it which is great because it means I can do the reveal at the end with like the proper shape. I'm being a bit lazy though and I'm not getting an actual pattern. I've just, just drafted one myself from looking at photos and stuff of other ones. So fingers crossed it works. If not I can make another one at some point with an actual pattern. So I'm doing one of the three piece ones. So this is the bit for the back and then I've done this for the sides as well. So it should theoretically create the right shape. So we shall see. <laughs> the bum pads were stitched along the outside leaving an opening at the top. I was running a bit low on stuffing so I made use of some cabbage bits that were too small to do anything with. The pads were then stuffed.
I'm so happy with how it turned out. I think the skirt pattern I used worked really well. It's got a good amount of fullness and it's super swishy and I love that. I think the net at the bottom was successful and I really appreciate all the advice I got off people on Facebook about leaving it long. Things that could be improved? Well, I messed up the pin tucks. They're not even trying to be straight in any way and there's some places where the seams don't really match up. This is something that I'll probably get better at with practice though when I do more. It's quite see-through which is a bit annoying because you can see my bum pad and corset through it. I do like that I was able to get a large amount of muslin like really cheap but it was quite hard to work with and kind of warped and I really like it being this transparent. I think next time I'll go with a plain cotton or something instead. I think I might have also made the bum pad a little bit too big. I don't really need much help in that area so I think a little less stuffing and actually using a proper pattern would create a better shape next time. For now I'm thinking if I do a bit quilting it might help to kind of flatten it a bit. Overall I'm really happy and I think I've got a good base for my walking suit. My next video I'll be making the shirt waist and I'm really looking forward to that. If you've enjoyed this video then giving it a like will be very much appreciated. I'm always open to your suggestions and constructive criticisms so anything you'd like to see let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos of me trying to make things then why not subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified next time I upload a video. Thanks for watching, bye!